Here's an introduction to calculus. So many people have asked me for this. We start with a line and there's nothing really interesting about a line except for how steep it is, is the slope. We'll pick a point X1, Y1. We'll pick another point X2, Y2. How much did we rise and how much did we run? We now have a valid way to measure the steepness rise over run. This rise is whatever the height of this point is minus the height of this point. That's Y2 minus Y1. And this run is however far over this point is minus however far this point is. So that's X2 minus X1. This is the equation of a line y equals mx plus b. This is a great way to work with lines, but if we want to get more complicated, let's change this into function notation into an f of x. It works the exact same way. We plug x1 into it and it outputs this y1, but instead it's going to be called f of x1. And when we plug in x2, we're going to have an output of f of x2. And we can also change our slope. Instead of y sub 2, let's make it f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1. So it's the exact same thing. We're measuring the rise over run, but we're using function notation instead. We can now do things that aren't lines. And now that we're not dealing with straight lines anymore, it's no longer called a slope. It's an average rate of change. That's on average, how much do we change going from this point to this point? This seems kind of weird. We say rise over run, but now it's going down and up. So let's look at it this way. Let's connect our two points, get rid of the rise over run. The slope of this segment is going to be our average rate of change. And as the graph changes, you can see that this average rate of change will also change. If we extend this segment out, it gives us a line. And the name of this line is the secant line. And this formula that gives us the average rate of change, it's also going to give us the slope of that secant line. On the x-axis, let's call this below the point x, which would make this an x right here. And this would be f of x. And then we can change this to x and this can be changed to f of x. From our point x, let's move over a certain distance h. That will make this dash mark here x plus h, which would then make this x2 and x plus h, and this f of x2 and f of x plus h. And we can change them over here. This positive x and this negative x are gonna cancel. So we just have an h on bottom. Let's move this down here, but let's start to move this point closer to this point. So our h is gonna start getting smaller. Let's go all the way till h gets to zero. And the way we write that in our formula is we write the limit as h approaches zero. And we're going to keep shrinking the h and getting the points closer and closer together until we get to h equals zero. And now that we're here at h equals zero, that means there's only one point. This line is no longer called a secant line. It's called a tangent line. And this point is called the point of tangency. So this is no longer an average rate of change because there's no two points for it to be an average for. This is an instantaneous rate of change. It's how fast it's changing at that instant. Another name we have for this is the derivative. So why did we make this a limit? Why don't we just say h is zero? Because if we made h zero, that would make this division by zero and we can't do division by zero. So this is the magic of calculus. Continue watching to see it work. As this moves around, we can find the slope of the tangent line for all of these points. Well, let's do a specific example. Let's look at the parabola y equals x squared. And we can see that there's different tangent lines for it as well. What is the slope of this tangent line to the parabola f of x equals x squared at the point 1, 1? Let's get rid of this real quick. This is the slope of the tangent line. So that's how we're going to answer the question. Let's bring this down. What is f of x? Well, f of x is x squared based on this right here. So we just get x squared. What is f of x plus h? We're going to plug the entire x plus h into the x. So it gives us x plus h squared. x plus h squared, that means x plus h times x plus h. And then we can bring the rest of this stuff down. Now to simplify this x plus h times x plus h, we can use one of these squares and do x plus h times x plus h. So x times x, that's x squared. h times x is hx. This h times x is hx. And h times h is h squared. So we can add up the inside stuff to get this here. And these two can be combined. So this is the same thing as x plus h times x plus h. We'll get rid of this and put this up here and bring the rest of the formula down. This x squared and this negative x squared can cancel each other out. And we can clean this up. Now I'm going to factor an h out of the top. So it'll look like this. We pull the h out. And to check this, h times 2x is 2xh, and h times h is h squared. So these two h's will cancel, giving us just this here. Look what we just did. We no longer have an h in the denominator. We can now plug in 0 for the h. And that gives us 2x plus 0, which is just 2x. And the notation we use for this, we say it's f prime of x. This means the derivative of x equals 2x. Or in other words, the slope of the tangent line is 2x. Let's get rid of all this stuff. 
to bring this up here, this says the slope at any point x is equal to 2x. We want it specifically at the point 1, so we're going to find f prime of 1. So all we have to do is plug in 1 for the x, and 2 times 1 is 2. So the slope of the tangent line at the point 1, 1 is 2. And we just did your first calculus problem. So this is what calculus is all about, where you have an issue where h can't be 0, but with some algebraic manipulation, we now can make h 0 to have a value. So you guys are awesome. Comment if you have any other questions. I'll talk to you soon. How exciting.